My mother was converted when she was about 12 years old uh, from a Croatian family. Her parents had come through Ellis Island. My grandmother on my mother's side was oftentimes uh, persecuted for her faith because uh, being Croatian uh, and Catholic are almost synonymous. You're almost a traitor if you if you leave Catholicism. Plus, the only evangelical church she could go to was Serbian. And the Catholics and the Serbians are constantly at war. So for my grandmother to leave Catholicism and in fellowship with Serbians was oftentimes very looked down upon. Uh, she suffered. My mother was over at a over at her girlfriend's house when she was 12 years old, and they happened to be Baptist, and she was playing with dolls up on the uh, second floor. And the family was gathered around the piano and started singing hymns. And my mother said she heard the hymns, but all of a sudden such a great remorse and weeping of sin and came over her. They shared the gospel with her with regard to her sin, and she was converted. Um, now, my mother um, eventually uh, married my father, and um, his both his parents, uh, my grandparents, were some of the first missionaries, Baptist missionaries, to Brazil in Manaus back in, I think, the 20s and 30s. Um, but my, grand, my father was never converted uh, that I know of. Uh, when I was 17, uh, we were out uh, building a fence, and he yelled, and I grabbed him, and um, we fell to the ground, and, and he was dead. Uh, I had never known him to profess faith in Christ. Um, at that point, I was it was basketball basketball season was beginning and such, and I um, was one of the captains on the team, and I was the uh, president of the. Of the Beta Club or Honor Society. Within just a few months, I digressed to getting finally kicked off the team and kicked out of the Honor Society. And I drank a lot. And um, people said that the, the trauma of my father's death led to all that, when in fact, that's what I said, uh, when in fact what I soon come to understand after I was a Christian was that my father's death gave my flesh a wonderful opportunity to do everything it had ever wanted to do. Um, it just manifested what I really was. I was a, a, a liar. The best. I mean, I don't know how to describe me except look up jerk in the dictionary. It had my picture there. A conceited, self-absorbed jerk. And I went to Murray State University for a few years and then decided that I wanted to be an oil and gas lawyer. Wherever that idea popped into my head, I don't know. Maybe it's because of the program Dallas or something. And the only place to do that was either Oklahoma or Texas. And I enrolled at the University of Texas. And while I was there, I, I thought to myself, I can change my life. Not be such a jerk. Not be so self-absorbed. Not be such a liar. And... Um, Nothing changed. Within a few months, I found myself right back into the same place I'd always been. And um, I noticed I moved into a place called Plaza 25 there at the University of Texas. And I noticed there was a group of guys there that just seemed different, just seemed very different. And after a while, I came to understand they were Christians and they would have Bible studies and things like that. And I didn't pay much attention to them. And then one night um, in February after I'd spent a semester there and just messed up my life altogether. Um, I was sitting on the edge of my bed. It was like one in the morning. And um, I was on steroids really heavy. I, I lifted weights all the time. And I was just, I was, I remember crying. I, I hadn't cried. And, and I was just, I just kept saying to myself, I am so miserable. I am so miserable. And I looked down, I had some steroids. And I thought, if only these were some kind of pill that I could just take and die. But I knew enough from my mom and things. I, I believe that there was something, you know, there, you didn't do that, you know. And um, just kept saying over and over, I'm so miserable. I'm so miserable. And it was like 1, 1 30 in the morning and, and someone knocked at my door. And I thought, well, who's that? 
So I, I opened the door, and here's this freshman. His name was Mike Moore. He was standing there, not a very tall guy, maybe five eight, five nine, or something. He's standing there, and he's kind of scared. I looked at him like, what? And he said, uh, you're probably going to beat me up. I thought, yeah, you're probably right. <laughs> you know, just what is... And he said, i got to talk to you. And although I knew him, I knew he was a nice guy and stuff. I didn't really know him. And um, I said, what do you want to talk to me about? He said, look, God has been dealing with me for two weeks and I need to come over here and talk to you. And I've been scared. and I can't take it any longer. I've got to talk to you. And I said, well, what? He goes, I just thought God wants me to tell you something. And I said, well, then I'm thinking, this is really strange. This guy's coming over with a word from God. I said, okay, well, what? He goes, that you're just miserable and you're going to keep being miserable until you surrender your life to Jesus Christ. And um, we talked till like four or five in the morning and it really impacted me. And then I was reading. I, my mom had given me a Bible and I found it and I started reading it. And I came to Psalms 103. It says... Um, that man's days are like grass as the flower of the field so he flourishes when the wind passes over him he is no more and the place acknowledges him no more and that made me angry because that's exactly what i knew i remember going to my dad's funeral and he was a very brilliant man he was a powerful man in his own right just many things about him but at his funeral people were talking about other things like the weather sports uh what's going on in a company i mean just it was like, this man just died. Shouldn't everybody just be quiet or something for a while? Shouldn't they think about him? In that verse where it says, the wind passes over and it's no more and the place acknowledges it no more. It's like he never even existed. I got angry and I kind of threw the Bible down on the bed. And then I walked over and I picked it up again. And it said, but the love of the Lord is everlasting on those who fear him. And that word everlasting, something everlasting. And then... I think maybe a couple times somebody visited me or something. And then one day I was at the library, at the undergraduate library at the University of Texas. We were competing against oil, other oil companies, supposedly, other students. And we were running off some oil surveys. And one of the, the girl on our team came up to me and she said, I'm going to have a party tomorrow. I think it was tomorrow night, she said. And uh, why don't you come to it? And I had kind of gotten to the point where I didn't, I used to really party and things. And, and I had gotten to the point where I didn't even do that anymore. I would just sit in a bar all by myself and drink. And so I looked at her and I said, no, I'm not coming to your party. And uh, she said, why not? She goes, you never do anything. Why don't you come? Why not? And really, this is what happened. I didn't think about my answer. I didn't, I mean, I didn't design it. Just all of a sudden it came out of my mouth and it shocked me as much as it did anybody else in the room. I said, I'm not going to your party because I'm a Christian now and I'm going to follow Jesus. And I looked at the guys. They all kind of turned around and looked at me because they knew what I was. I, I, I drank, lie, just... And they looked at me. When they looked at me, it's like all of a sudden I realized what I said. And it's like just a light just went... I mean, it's just like, it wasn't a literal light. No, don't criticize me for that statement. It's just, it's a metaphor. <laughs> it was just like, all of a sudden, it was like, that's, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I believe in Jesus. I, I, I do. I believe. I believe. I'm sitting there in front of these guys. I'm going, yeah, I I believe in Jesus. I really do believe in Jesus. And I just walked out and then I started walking quicker because I, I was just like, what has happened to me? I felt like it's like just new. And I remember getting to the library doors, the outside doors, and I opened them up and there was a girl coming in who was part, who was in the same dorm. And I didn't know this, but a whole group of people have been praying for me since the, when I first moved into the dorm, like several months prior, been praying for me. She was one of the girls. When I opened up the door, she goes, Paul, Paul, what's happened to you? And then I got scared. I got real scared. I was like, I don't know. 
and I just took off running and I, I walked, ran as fast as I could back, back to the apartment and I found that guy. And I said, Mike, Mike, I, I'm really scared. Something happened to me in the library. All I know is I believe in Jesus and I'm new. He said, you look new. And so he took me down to the guy who was like the RA who had been leading a Bible study named Mike Martin. And uh, I sat and all these guys, Mike Martin and Stuart DePena and Mike Moore and all these different guys that had been studying the Bible together and were kind of leaders, you could say, of different like Campus Crusade and things. I sat down and I started telling them everything that happened. I'll never forget one of them goes, You've been born again. <laughs> and then I was like, what's that? You know, 